Hi everyone, I'm Krista Seiden, and in this video, I'm gonna walk you through the user interface of a Google Analytics 4 property to help you understand where things are and how to take advantage of all of the reporting and analysis functionality that is available to you in Google Analytics 4 properties. With that, let's go ahead and dive into the demo. So here we are in our Google Analytics 4 demo account for the Google Merchandise Store. Now, the Google Merchandise Store is an actual store where you can buy Google branded gear, meaning that this is an e-commerce store. And so you'll actually see a lot of the monetization or the e-commerce reports populated here in this demo account, showing you real data that you can play with. Now, to orient ourselves, I want to show you first how the navigation structure works. So over on the far left, you'll see that we now have two navigation menus within Google Analytics 4 properties. We'll start with this first section, which divides all of the features of Google Analytics 4 into different sections. First one is reports. And clicking into reports will drop you here into the report snapshot. Now, this is previously called the home screen in both Google Analytics 4 and in Universal Analytics, now called the report snapshot. And this report gives you a whole lot of information easily accessible so that you can get a quick overview of what's going on on your site. So I see things like the total number of users, new users, average time and total revenue. I have a real time snapshot here in this widget on the right. And if I scroll down, I'll see there are a lot more cards here with things like insights, as well as helping me understand where my users are coming from. Back up at the top, I also wanted to orient you to the navigation bar at the top. First things first, we have this search bar. And by clicking in here, you can actually take advantage of some of the many features that this search bar offers. It doesn't just help you search for a particular report, although I could do something like pages and it will pull up that top pages by users or the pages and screens report that I could easily click into. But if I get rid of that, you'll also see that you can ask analytics intelligence questions through here, such as how many users today? Now, what's really cool about this is this is actual natural language. This is something you might say, but not necessarily know how to look for that report within Google Analytics 4. But I can see here, it gives me right off the bat, users is 701, very cool. I also have other articles that link to information about user counts if that was what I was looking for instead. Also at the top here, we have our date comparison or our calendar. And so you can go ahead and pick different time periods that you want to analyze. Or on the right-hand side in the calendar, I can click to choose a custom date range. I can also choose to compare date ranges by toggling this on or off and choose the time period I want to compare to, whether that's the same time period in the previous month or the previous year or whatever custom time period I'd like to compare. If I click out of there, there's a few more boxes at the top I wanted to go over. One is to edit your comparisons. Now a comparison is a selection of certain data. So for example, I could say, just show me users that are mobile users, and then I can compare mobile users to web users, for example. This acts somewhat like a segment from Universal Analytics. Next, I have the ability to share a report. So if I click this link, I'll get a shareable link to share this report out. And then we have insights. Now this is similar to the intelligence insights we saw in the search bar, but in addition to being able to query from the search bar, we see some queries that are offered for us here in this insights pane, such as things around basic performance, like how many users did I have last week? Clicking that will bring up the information right there within this pane. If I close out of there, the last thing is to be able to customize this report which is a whole nother topic that we'll cover at the very end. Moving on, the rest of the reports section is a catalog of all of the various reports available to you as a user of Google Analytics 4. We have our real-time reports, which show us a lot of information about who is on our site within the last 30 minutes. In this case, we can see that we have about 204 people over the last 30 minutes and shows activity per minute. But this also goes into a lot more detail than the real-time reports we had in Universal Analytics. If you scroll down, you can see a lot of that detail within these cards. So for example, users by source or users by audience, page views, and so on. And if I wanted to see things like event parameters, 
I could click into the event that I was interested in, and it will actually show a breakdown of the parameters and the event count per. This is a lot more detailed information than was previously available and makes real-time reporting that much more actionable. Moving on, we have our lifecycle reports, and these are categorized into a few different sections. First, we have acquisition, and this is gonna start with an overview report. Similarly, all of the different sections here generally start with an overview report, which will be this report containing several widgets of information. Here you'll see things like your users and new users, as well as that real-time overview, plus additional cards looking at your various acquisition medium sources and campaigns. One thing to note here is that in Google Analytics 4 properties, we have both user acquisition and traffic acquisition. User acquisition is going to be the first user medium source or campaign that was observed. And then traffic acquisition will be the source medium and campaign for that particular session. Now, if you scroll down in any one of these detailed reports, you'll notice that this is a table report that looks somewhat similar to what you might've seen in Universal Analytics. You can go ahead and change the primary dimension that's being showed. Here we have our session source and medium. I can change that to just session campaign, for example, if that's what I wanted to show. And I can break this down by adding an additional dimension or a secondary dimension by clicking this plus button. So for example, I could break this down by something like device category. This will rerun this report and now show me my session campaign broken down by device category. Moving on, the next reports we have here live under the engagement section. So again, we'll start with this overview report, which is gonna show us an overview of some of the various engagement metrics available in Google Analytics 4 properties. And then we have events. Now events are central to how Google Analytics 4 properties work. And when you scroll down here, what we're looking at are the event counts and users, as well as event count per user, and in this case, revenue, associated with every event. We can filter by a particular event name and search for that in this search box. Again, you can go ahead and break this down by a secondary dimension. Now, if you click into any one of these events, you'll get a more detailed report of additional information for every event within that table. In this case, it shows us things like event count and events in the last 30 minutes, as well as our page titles, count by country, and so on. Next, we have conversions. And these are very similar to events. In fact, they are events, but they are events that have been marked as a conversion or made special to be able to be shareable across the Google marketing platform, specifically with Google ads, as well as having additional information about these conversions. Conversions are things like a first visit or a purchase or something that your business considers to be a special event. In this case, if I click into purchase, I will get more information about this event. Moving on, we have the pages and screens report. This is gonna be closest to the pages report from Universal Analytics. And it is looking at, in this case, all the page titles or screen classes that are visited on the Google Merchandise Store. So you see things like the homepage, the shopping cart page, and so on. Next, we have our monetization reports. Again, this is gonna start with an overview, which is gonna show us various cards that have to do with monetization efforts. In this case, we're looking at total revenue and ad revenue. Scrolling down, we see total purchasers, purchase revenue per user, and so on. E-commerce purchases is going to be information specific to an e-commerce implementation of Google Analytics 4. And it's gonna look at things like item views by item name, add to carts, and so on. And it's gonna be able to break this down by various parameters here. For example, item name. But if you click in here, you'll be able to change to a different e-commerce parameter, such as item ID. In-app purchases and publisher ads are additional reports that live under the monetization section. And these are specific to users who have those types of integrations, or in the case of in-app purchases, to an app property. Finally, we have our retention reports. And this is gonna look at retention-related metrics within Google Analytics 4. Specifically, we'll see user retention by cohort and engagement by cohort. That finishes out the lifecycle section. And moving on, we have the user section. This is gonna be information 
about your users. In Universal Analytics, this lived under the audience section. And in Google Analytics 4, it's consolidated into two different areas for demographics and tech. Again, we'll start with our demographics overview. And we'll see things like country, as well as city, gender, and interests. Note that to be able to see data for gender, interests, age, and so on, you will have to have Google Signals enabled. And the Google Merchandise Store demo account does not have this enabled, so these reports aren't showing any data. The demographic details report will be a table report breaking much of this down. And you'll be able to select several different demographic dimensions that you want to look at here. So for example, if I don't want to see country, I can click here and instead break this down to city. I can add a secondary dimension, just like in any other table report. For example, if I went ahead and added that device category, I'm now going to break this table down by city by device category. Tech is going to look very similar. The tech overview will have our tech-related cards, in this case, platform, operating system, device category, and so on. And just like all of our other table reports, the details report will be a table report with dimensions related to tech. So in this case, it starts with browser, and I can change that to any one of the other tech-related dimensions to analyze in more detail. That closes out the reporting section. The last thing to show here is this library section. This is something that will require admin access on the account. So if you are an account admin, you should see this. If you're not an admin, you won't have this option. But this allows you to go ahead and start to customize the look and feel of the reports that live within Google Analytics 4. Not only can you add to the reports that you'll see in this left-hand nav, but you can rename them and reorder them any way that you would like. Next, we have the Explore section of Google Analytics 4. Now, if we click in here, you'll see the explorations that you can use. We have Freeform, which is like a table report, Funnel Exploration, which allows you to build a funnel with up to 10 steps, a Path Exploration, which really allows you to dig deep on the path that a user has taken through your website, and several more. You can see all of these by clicking into the template gallery link to see a full list of the techniques that are available, as well as if you scroll down, you'll see both use cases and industries, which are gonna be pre-populated reports with several dimensions and metrics already applied related to the various topics that these list. So acquisition will have a bunch of acquisition related reports Gaming will have a bunch of reports pre-built for you related to gaming. Going on back, our next section is called Advertising. Here, we'll start with the Advertising Snapshot. This is much like the Home Report or any of the other overview reports in the rest of Google Analytics 4. So you'll see cards that are related to the various topics covered in this section. Here we have our conversions by our channel grouping, some insights, and something specifically related to conversion paths and attribution models. Next, we have our model comparison report. Now, this report is really cool because it allows you to compare different attribution models side by side to see the difference in how these actually perform. Note that this is looking at all of your conversions together, but if you click in here, you can choose to just look at one conversion, which might make a little bit more sense for how you wanna analyze. So for example, if we just wanna look at our purchases, I can choose that and select apply. And now I can compare two different attribution models. The first one I have here is cross channel last click. And the second one is showing as linear. If I wanted to change this, I could click in and select first click. And now this data will update to be a first click model. If you scroll on over, this last column is gonna show your percent change between the first two columns, so between the different attribution models. Now, one thing that strikes me here is that organic social seems to have significantly more revenue associated with a first click model than a last click model. And that actually makes a lot of sense to me considering organic social is generally a very top of funnel tactic. So people may click something from social, come to your site, look around, but then leave and come back sometime later through a different channel. 
and then purchase, which means that that purchase will be attributed to the last channel that they came through. But when we compare this side by side, you can actually see the impact that social had as a first channel or as a first click. Next, we have our conversion paths report. And this shows you the paths to conversion or how many touch points it might take to get that conversion. Now, again, you'll be able to select how many conversion events you want to look at up here. So I'll leave this as just the one. And when we scroll down to the table, we can see that just coming direct is the top conversion path during the state range. But number two and number three referrals show that it actually might take three or even four different referrals, so multiple referral touch points to finally get those conversions on site. Our last section here is the configure section. Now, this is a section that has a lot of functionality related to how you configure your Google Analytics 4 property. So for example, the first thing we see here is our events table. This shows all of the existing events that we are collecting and allows us to choose to mark them as a conversion or not. You can also choose to modify or create events through here. And there are separate videos diving into those topics. And this gives you an overall idea of the total sum of events that you're collecting in your property. Conversions will be a subset of all of those events, and these are just the ones that are already marked as conversions. And this gives you a good idea of how many conversion-specific events you're targeting. There's also a tab in here for network settings. So if you have an app associated with this property, this is where you'll be able to set up networks for postbacks. Next, we have our audiences. So this will list out all of the audiences that have been created in this property and also give you the ability to create a new audience. Then we have custom definitions. This is where you'll be able to see and create, if you have admin access, custom dimensions and custom metrics. So here I can see we have a number of custom dimensions that have already been added to this property. And if I have admin access, I can go ahead to click to create a brand new custom dimension. Similarly, clicking over to the custom metrics pane, we see the same ability here. Finally, we have debug view. Now, this will show you a real-time view of data coming in that is set to debug so that you can look as a developer specifically about how these events are coming in and make sure that this data is showing up the way that you want it to see it before you actually go ahead and push that data to production. The last thing that we have here down on the bottom is our admin section. Now, this is going to look similar, but somewhat different than Universal Analytics, because in Google Analytics 4, we have an account and a property, but we don't have views. Whereas in Universal Analytics, you would have a third pane of data on the right-hand side for view-specific settings. This is where you'll be able to set up things that are specific to this Google Analytics 4 property around your property settings, as well as access management and information deeper about your data streams and data settings. This is where you'll also be able to set up things like product linking and manage the overall settings of your Google Analytics 4 property.